These flowers provide an important habitat for my beneficial insects. The point of these flowers is that they also are a habitat for thrips and other pests. But the importance of them is that they provide a habitat for my beneficials when there are no pests on my targeted plants. And this seven spotted ladybug in here is being used to illustrate that if you were to release a predator mite like Neocelius fallacious into your garden, Neocelius will control your bud mite and your russet mites, but when there's not enough of those present, it will survive on the flower pollen of your flowers. So if you were to replace in your mind, your imagination, the seventh spotted lady beetle that keeps disappearing on me, that it is actually a Neocelius fallacious predator mite, or a couple of the other predator mites that can survive on flower pollen. You would be making a release into your garden and having a habitat for them to survive on. This is really important, especially for the uh, marijuana growers out there that uh, seem to be selling a lot of um, broad mite and bud mite controls too. If you were to go with more than just having grass growing in or pot growing in your containers and actually introduce some plants like stock or marigolds or lissom, your predator mites would have a habitat to thrive in. I've read many times by people who are just completely ill-informed that these plants are going to be the source of your pest problem. And that's completely incorrect. These plants are going to be the source of the breeding ground or the, provide the breeding ground for your predatory mites when there are not enough pests to survive on in your cannabis garden. And the same is true for tomato gardeners. I see many tomato gardens where it's almost entirely just tomatoes. Okay, sunflowers, other flowers, marigolds, alyssum are key to keeping your plants healthy without having to spray or put up with the damage from russet or bud mites.